Hello everyone, in this video, let us take a look at uh, some of the questions that were asked on the community recently. So this first question is uh, from uh, Jeetal and uh, she is asking about add a field from Jira to Jira service desk. And if you read this question, she is basically asking about, uh, how I would like to add a field for example, fixed version from Jira to Jira service test ticket so that the customers can view in which release the fix is available. So this is a very common question and usually when you have, let us say, your service test catering to your external customers and you want to, to raise a ticket in your development project to, let us say, create a new feature or maybe fix a bug, you may want to keep your customers up to date that this particular ticket will be resolved in uh, maybe the next release. So for doing this, you can of course uh, link your Jira service test ticket to your Jira software ticket or bug or improvement new feature. It could be an issue type using a simple link. You can have uh, this uh, relation between uh, these two different projects. Now, with the help of automation, you can actually create this uh, comment in your Jira service desk ticket whenever you are marking your bug or any issue in your Jira software, which is linked to the ticket. And basically when you are marking it as, let us say, to be, to be released in the next version, you can actually also create a transition, some kind of a global transition, or maybe you can have a status somewhere. And the moment you transition the issue from uh, let us say any state to that particular state that says uh, selected for development or maybe to be fixed in the upcoming release, you can have a transition screen where you can ask the customer to fill up a fixed version or uh, any field. And, and the moment you create this transition, the moment you do this transition, you can do a few things like uh, using a post function, you can add a comment on your uh, original Jira service test ticket. And for doing this, you need to have some automation. And I think uh, uh, this should be enough to keep your customers at least uh, be aware of uh, this uh, version that will have this uh, fix for the ticket that they raised. So let us take a look at the uh, second question. So the second question is from uh, Rahul uh, Vallani and Rahul is asking about how to resolve uh, a task in Jira and he is actually talking about uh, creating uh, sprints and uh, when he completes the sprint he is still not sure how to basically resolve uh, a ticket or not a ticket but uh, the stories or bugs. At the same time he is also not uh, receiving emails for the issues that he is uh, resolving. So my recommendation to Rahul would be to take a look at your uh, Scrum configurations. Maybe you are not uh, resolving or maybe you are not uh, setting the, res the resolution field and that is why the issues don't really appear to be resolved. For checking how Scrum based projects work, you can actually create a board with some sample data. And when you create that particular uh, project with some sample data, you can uh, just play with it and it will also help you in understanding how Jira software scrum based uh, projects work. The second question is about uh, setting this, uh, this value in your profile that says uh, notify me for all the notifications of your own changes. So if you change this to notify me right now, by default, uh, I'm sure it is uh, do not notify me. And that is why you are probably not uh, receiving any email notifications because when you make a change, you are the, you, you are basically making the change and uh, you're the kind of the owner of that particular change. So you won't receive any email, but you can always uh, go to your profile and uh, change it. The third question is about, uh, <clears throat> is it possible to add a custom field within a single Jira issue? And uh, the answer is no. You basically add a custom field to a screen and screen is uh, associated to the issue types. And it is not really tied to a specific uh, 
issue within your project. So it can't really be done uh, using custom fields. And I'm not really sure what is the purpose of uh, doing that. You can always use something like label because if you want to add some additional information, label is like a free tagging field where you can add some additional keywords or tags to basically identify the issues that you have in the project. But you can't really have a custom field specific to maybe one Jira issue. The fourth question is about uh, regarding epic milestone issue task subtask. And uh, this question is from uh, Suvankar Chakrabarti. And uh, he's asking about uh, he, he basically has a, a question about migration of uh, Jira from server to cloud. And he wants to know whether he'll be able to have the same sort of hierarchy after moving to cloud. And he's also trying to understand how long it will take. Well, the first uh, question is about uh, preserving the configurations and data. So if you're doing a full restore of your Jira instance from server to cloud, you should ideally have uh, the same set of features. Of course, you have some features that are a bit different. You may not have all the add-ons or the apps on the cloud that you might be using on Jira server. Uh, you also need to figure out uh, any customizations. So for understanding the time it will take, you need to do it uh, at least on a test instance first because there are a lot of factors that can affect the time that it might take. For example, uh, maybe you have 100 issues or maybe you have 10,000 issues on server. Server can have uh, quite a lot of issues uh, and moving those many issues on cloud can take some time. Also at the same time, you also want to migrate the attachments. So you can also take a look at uh, this uh, page where you have the details of uh, this uh, migration and doing this uh, migration from server to cloud or in fact uh, any kind of migration is not really always straightforward. You need to identify uh, uh, the potential problems that might occur and also come up with the workarounds. So just take a look at the documentation. It has a lot of information. And even, if, even before you plan to do it on the production instance, make sure you have done it before on a, a test environment. Sign up for a cloud version, evaluate, evaluation version of cloud and do it uh, maybe a couple of times in the beginning to understand all the potential problems that you can potentially face. At the same time, also come up with the workaround so that you can uh, fix them if you can, or you can uh, at least uh, let your customers know that these features, these add-ons, or in fact, uh, the way you work on uh, your Jira projects might be a bit different on cloud. So these are all the questions that I uh, wanted to uh, take today. And I hope you learned and you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much.